Hello everyone, my name is The Demented Salad and today I'm going to be covering the speedrun tutorial for Resident Evil 5 New Game Amateur Solo. This tutorial is going to cover the speedrun from beginning to end over multiple videos, as well as explain and showcase the strategies and tech we use in this run. As the name implies, New Game means that you need to start the game from a fresh save file. However, Resident Evil 5 doesn't have a native New Game option, and as a result of this, Whenever you want to do a new game run, you will need to delete your current save file and create a new one. This method can be avoided on the PC version, since you can run the game without a save file, which saves around 30-40 to 40 seconds over the run. This can also be used for co-op runs, but the downside of this method is that if your game crashes or you disconnect, there is no save to go back to, and you will have to restart your run. For solo runs, you can also run the game offline, which also saves around 15-20 to 20 seconds over the run. Disabling the DLC also saves you around 5 seconds. If you're running Resident Evil 5 on the PC version, you must run the game on version 1.1.0, as this is the only version allowed for speedrunning due to issues with the previous updates. I'm going to leave links to tutorials in the description of how to set up your game for 1.1.0, as well as how to delete and create new game files for both console and PC. Now that's out of the way, we can talk about FPS. As with all Resident Evil games since Resident Evil 4, FPS affects a wide variety of things, ranging from loading in slightly faster on high FPS, all the way to affecting how enemy AI works. While most consoles are locked to either 30 or 60 depending on their generation, PC has the option of unlocked, which is 120, and this is the best option to run the game with on solo. This is due to how high your FPS in this game speeds up most animations, as well as allowing you to skip in-game cutscenes faster and load back in faster after a cutscene. The downside to this, however, is that it makes your hitbox larger, which makes it much easier for you and Sheva to run into invisible walls, and could cause you to lose a large chunk of time if you aren't careful. The next thing I want to talk about is the game's control scheme. Resident Evil 5 has two main control types, controller and mouse and keyboard. If you play with a controller, you will have access to four different controller types. Controller types A and C are based off of Resident Evil 4's control scheme, with type C allowing you to rotate your camera and strafe sideways, as opposed to type A, where you can adjust your viewpoint and walk. Type B allows you to adjust your viewpoint like type A, but swaps out the weapon controls to have a more modern feel to them. Type D is a mixture of type B and C, which keeps the more modern weapon controls while allowing you to rotate your camera and strafe. While each of the controller types offer different pros and cons, they are mainly just down to preference, and any time save or loss is minimal. On PC, Playing with either controller or mouse and keyboard is more or less up to your preference. However, both control schemes have pros and cons that need to be taken into account when running. The pros of a controller compared to keyboard and mouse are that firstly, controllers allow for more optimal menuing, both in-game and in shops. This is due to the controller having a better layout than keyboard and mouse, which while allowing you to use both your mouse and keyboard for menuing, it is much easier to mess up menuing with the mouse, and the layout of a keyboard makes it difficult to menu optimally. Secondly, controller allows for a specific tech involving semi-automatic sniper rifles, where you can reload the sniper rifle while shooting it, therefore skipping the reload animation while allowing you to keep shooting. The downsides of controller compared to keyboard and mouse are firstly that you get no reticle when throwing grenades on a controller, making a specific tech harder to achieve. Secondly, depending on your controller scheme, your turning speed is bound to your left analog stick, and rotating it too far can cause you to stand still on the spot, whereas keyboard and mouse allows for seamless turning at all times. Thirdly, keyboard allows you to hold more weapons at once, since your item slots are 1 to 9 on keyboard, whereas on controller they are up down, left and right on the D-pad. Finally, turning cranks is faster on keyboard, but only if you spam A and D very fast, and if your rhythm is slightly off, it will be slower than controller. Sheva also turns cranks faster when your control scheme is on keyboard and mouse, so even if you are using controller, it is advised to swap while Sheva turns cranks and valves. There are two different types of rotation tech in Resident Evil 5. Controller types A and B allow you to use a rotation tech called C-turning. This is done by using the right analog stick to adjust your viewpoint to face either left or right, and then quickly tapping the aim button with either a weapon or grenade. This will rotate you in the desired direction, and can be spammed to rotate faster. The other tech is one of the game's core mechanics, which is quick turning. Quick turning allows you to do a quick 180 degree turn, which can be very useful in a lot of places during the run. This is slower than using your mouse to rotate, but the time loss is minimal. 
Now onto some more main game mechanics. One of the main mechanics in this game is the inventory. Unlike in Resident Evil 4, going into your inventory does not pause the game. Instead, it opens as a 9 slot overlay on your screen that you can interact with while playing. You can interact with your inventory at all times, which allows for on-the-fly weapon changes or inventory management to fit the situation. Another very interesting thing about the game's inventory is that it brings back a mechanic from the classic games that allows you to reload guns from your inventory instead of having to do it manually. This can be done on mouse and keyboard by dragging ammo on top of your weapon, or on controller by picking up the ammo and then dropping it onto the weapon. You can also mix herbs in the same way. In this game, certain interactions give you iframes, and you can interact with your inventory while doing these for no time loss. For instance, you can interact with your inventory while doing things like climbing ladders, using QTEs on an enemy, or doing things like jumping over walls and kicking doors. This game also offers a mechanic called Quick Rocket Swap. This is done by aiming in any weapon other than the rocket launcher, and then swapping to the rocket. This automatically pulls up the rocket launcher and aims it in, whereas normally, if you were to equip a rocket launcher, there is an animation of you readying it up before aiming in. I'm also going to use this opportunity to talk about a very important mechanic that's been part of Resident Evil since 4, and this is DA. DA stands for Difficulty Adjustment, and the basic premise behind it is that the better you play, the harder the game gets, and the worse you play, the easier the game gets. How DA works slightly changes throughout most of the Resident Evil games, however, it is possible to manipulate it. This game's DA ranges from 0 to 10,999, depending on what difficulty you're on, and there are several different DA ranks on each difficulty that you can achieve, except for Unprofessional, where you are locked at 10,999. However, the main DA ranks that you will be playing in are 6,000 to 8,249, and 8,250 to 10,999. This is because while you can go under 6000 DA, the game will automatically reset it back to 6000 at the next load point or cutscene. There are several ways that you can gain DA in this game. Hitting and killing enemies, as well as dodging enemy attacks will all cause you to gain DA. Some sections of the game will also cause you to gain a large chunk of DA when a boss spawns. You can lose DA by taking damage, going into dying, and actually dying. And this is done in specific areas throughout the run to achieve specific tech. In a lot of the Resident Evil games, we are able to view our DA via an SRT. An SRT is a speedrunning tool that allows us to have an overlay of the game which shows us different things, such as our money, our HP, enemy HP, and our DA. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description to the GitHub page where you will find the SRT. It was made by my good friend Mysterion, who also worked on the original auto splitter for this game. He's done a lot of work for the community, so please go give him some support. I will also leave his YouTube in the description for you to go check out too. The final and most important mechanic this game offers is Sheva. Sheva is your AI partner who follows you throughout the game, and not surprisingly, she is the most RNG aspect of the speedrun. In single player, Sheva can be given two different commands to control her with. Cover causes Sheva to follow the player, and she will try to stay close to you. An attack causes her to be more aggressive and pick up items more often. Most of the time you want to keep Sheva in cover so she will follow you, but there are several places in the run where it's important for her to be on attack. Like Resident Evil 4, this game uses tank controls, and because of this Sheva's movement is heavily impaired. For the most part, Sheva can slightly turn while running, but almost any sharp corner causes her to stand still and rotate before she can start moving again. This paired with how badly her pathing is coded can cause some interesting situations where instead of running in a straight line to her objective, she'll take the scenic route which often involves her stopping to turn multiple times. You can however manipulate Shiver to a degree where she will follow you. One way you can do this is while running. Slow down slightly to where Shiver is more or less next to you and then continue running. This for some reason causes her pathing to be much more accurate and she will follow you much closer. This helps with a lot of her RNG and if done correctly can speed up the run significantly. And with that, I believe that sums up the first part of this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate you all. If you guys enjoyed the video and found it informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. If you are interested, you can also follow me on my Twitch channel, which will also be in the description. I do speedruns and variety games on there. If I did miss anything, I'll probably cover it in another video, because there is a lot to this game, and it's easy to miss things. In the next video, we will be covering the first chapter of the game. So I hope to see you there.